well, Matt, see, some people grow up and they change. Others uh, send, send their colleagues in Congress nude photos of women that they've slept with today. You just listened to a snippet of Cenk Uygur and Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks interview with Congressman Matt Gates, and the whole interview was very contentious, but things really went off the rails when they began to press him on his election denialism and he didn't have good responses, which is when he resorted to insulting them and it just deteriorated from there. So let's listen to a little bit more. What I care about is if your friend Donald Trump wins in 2024, we might never have another election because he's an obvious pathological liar, doesn't believe in democracy, didn't want to leave even though he lost the election, and you know it. Jake, the last time you were on the ballot, you got 4% of the vote. So for you So what? What does that have to do with anything that, that we're talking anything? about right now? Okay, Matt, if we're going in that direction, you guys might listen, you had sex with a 17-year-old, according to allegations, uh, and what? you what? asked for a pardon. Hold on. You, you asked for a pardon. You asked for Pardon. Why did you ask for the pardon? Yeah, why did you ask Trump for a pardon why if you, you didn't break any laws? I've been overwhelmingly re-elected. Re you guys are in some sort of weird struggle session there, and I'm just glad, <laughs> even though the internet hated you having me on, Jake, you're getting to see what a congressional victory party looks like, and that's something that might be a novel experience Why did you. you ask for a pardon for having sex with a 17-year-old? That something that even happened. You're, like, reading into an anonymous internet conspiracy. And it's really sad because in my district, the voters saw through that. In my state, we're over. Did you ask for the pardon? That, that has all been debunked. I've addressed it. President Trump has addressed it. And by the way, you should look at your own comments about women that caused Bernie Sanders to unendorse you. Imagine being so aligned with Bernie Sanders that he would endorse you, but he has to pull his endorsement because the things that you said were so yeah. Well, Matt, see, some people grow up and they change. Others uh, send send their colleagues in Congress nude photos of women that they've slept with today and uh, are hated by members of their own party, which uh, there are numerous supports about that. You know, keep so, about but I appreciate you coming on to answer our questions. People who told those lies Did are going to by any chance get involved? They were not lies, uh, Matt, you know it. You, you a, dude, it's no wonder you guys don't have the trust of the voters because you guys sit here and just spew this nonsense that isn't relevant to people's lives. We're going to focus on inflation. We're going to focus on the border. We're going to focus on investigations. And the result is we're going to win in 2024. Democracy will be fine and you guys will still be crying on the young turn. Did, did you, you never answered the question, did you sleep with the 17? Absolutely not. That has been totally debunked. And by the way, more women have made accusations against Joe Biden that have made accusations against me. We've talked about them. You should be really proud of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. my number is zero. You can't even keep Bernie Sanders' endorsement, and Joe Biden doesn't exactly have a clean record himself. So we're pretty happy here in the Sunshine State. One Miami-Dade County, one my district. Looks like the House and Senate will flip, and eager to get to Washington to get to work. That, that was um, that was something. Now, I want to play a clip from my Twitch stream because I watched this for the first time live on Twitch, and this is my genuine reaction the first time seeing this. Okay, Matt, if we're going in that direction, you, guys you had sex with a 17 year old. Allegations, uh, and you asked for a pardon. Hold on, you, you asked for a pardon. You asked for a pardon. Why did you ask for a pardon? Yeah, why did you ask Trump for a pardon why if you didn't ask for a break any laws? <laughs> Damn. Now, that was shocking to me because I expected them to push back. I've watched a lot of TYT interviews, and they always hold their guests' feet to the fire. But I didn't actually expect it to just straight up devolve into an argument. And I've got to say, it was, it was really entertaining, and it was nice to watch Matt Gates squirm because he was desperate to try to find some way to insult Jenk, and he kept bringing up the election loss. But you lose. You're an automatic loser. When they're talking about your alleged sex trafficking of a minor, bringing up his election loss, that's nowhere near as embarrassing as what they're blasting you for, but he doesn't quit, which leads to them bringing up that investigation again, and he just doesn't get it. Like, like this was, oh my God, what a horrible look for Matt Gates. So um, he says, the last time you were on the ballot, you got 4% of the vote, as if that disqualifies Jenk from speaking about the election conspiracy theories by Donald Trump. You wanna know what Jenk did when he lost? He conceded the race. That's what you're supposed to do when you lose this election. Uh, when you lose elections in general, but Trump didn't do that in 2020, and that's what he's asking you about. But since you don't have a justifiable reason to doubt the election, you just you result 
to insulting so that way the topic changes but it got worse for matt gates because they didn't just continue to press about the election they started to talk about the sex trafficking so that was a bad move for him to begin insulting them also um he called the allegation an anonymous internet conspiracy the allegation is not an anonymous internet conspiracy theory the justice department under trump started to investigate matt gates joel greenberg his wingman and friend was convicted so you can't with a straight face claim that that's just an internet conspiracy theory when every single person knows that that's false it's just really embarrassing he also brought up how bernie sanders unendorsed jenk okay still not as embarrassing at all as what you're dealing with currently. And that was a bad move for Bernie Sanders. I was against Bernie Sanders doing that. But Jenk Uger, uh, in this next clip that we're going to see, I think that he hits back with a pretty devastating point about why the Democratic Party establishment rejected Jenk, but the Republican establishment is accepting Matt Gates. Uh, by the way, there was one difference uh, between us. The Democratic Party did not support me because I uh, am against their corruption. Whereas you kissed the ass of the Republican leaders 24 7, so they were very Bernie. happy to support Jay, you. You couldn't even hold Bernie. He endorsed you and had to unendorse you. Like, do you think Bernie is all yeah. of a sudden the establishment of the Democratic Party? He's not even a Democrat, and he left you on the side of the road with your 4% of the vote. Matt, I don't care about my personal career at all. I told really? Bernie to do that. I actually wanted Bernie to win that election really badly, and I didn't want to get in his way because I care about policies. I care about higher wages. I care about everybody in the country getting health insurance. I care about them getting paid family leave. I care about them getting child tax credit. And what I heard from you tonight is when you guys win, you're not going to do anything about wages. You're, you're going to make sure that people do not get any help in the categories that I just mentioned. No, wait, so just look up in the The real evil is Medicaid, to be fair. The, 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 the real evil in the country is Medicaid. And now the do American people are going to get something in the Republican majority. All right, Matt Gates. Uh, Thank you for joining us. We appreciate Thanks it. For having me. Appreciate it. This is fun. Yikes. Now, <laughs> I made this point on Twitch and I'll make it again here. Ask yourself this question. What would you rather be made fun of for? Losing an election or being accused of sex trafficking a minor? I think it's no contest. I'd rather take the L on the election. So this was such a bad look for Matt Gates, and I I'm glad that this interview took place because um, it was very embarrassing for him. And I I've got to address the controversy surrounding this whole interview. There were a lot of people who were angry that TYT decided to platform Matt Gates, and I, I disagree with that. Um, if they were going to give a softball interview, then I would disagree with them platforming him. But if you platform someone and you push back vociferously against their lies, then it's perfectly fine. And without TYT's contentious interviews, we wouldn't have the notorious pastor in like 2008, circa 2009 of TYT, where uh, they talked to him because he claimed that they were putting gay semen in Starbucks coffees. And that's why people were addicted to drinking Starbucks. And in that interview, they actually got that pastor to low-key admit that he's gay. I kid you not. So, Pastor Manning, I'm getting sense for overall from your descriptions here that you think that being gay is a lifestyle choice, so it's a choice that a lot of people would want to make. You think that semen is delicious to a lot of people. And, and these are choices that people make. So it seems like perhaps if it wasn't for the Bible and the teachings of Moses, etc., that, that you might have been tempted by those choices as well. Uh, is, that, is that the case? Have you been tempted? Oh, absolutely. No, 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 no doubt about it. You know, uh, Jenk, I spent three and a half years in prison. So their interviews are fantastic. So I had no problems with their interview. Now, I do get the criticism of TYT as of late with regard to their tough on crime stance. I vociferously disagree with that. Uh, crime is one of these issues that Republicans trot out every single election cycle to fear monger and, and try to galvanize voters. And even if there has been a slight uptick in crime, well, it's down significantly from the 90s overall. So even if, you know, if crime was up here, but then it dropped and then it went up a little bit, I don't think that's justification for all of the hysteria, right? I think that there are other issues before crime that affect the American people in a more concrete way. So, you know, I understand the criticism of TYT with regard to that issue. I vociferously disagree with Cenk Uger voting for Rick Caruso. That is something that I view as really hurtful considering his whole 
ethos has been money in politics is a problem and that's a billionaire who's spending millions of dollars to buy that race but just because i have these disagreements with tyt doesn't negate all of the good things that they've done throughout the years just because they've said some things that i disagree with as of late doesn't necessarily mean that i expect them to do propaganda at the behest of the right and matt gates i think that you can put aside those disagreements and, you know, you can see that this interview very clearly was going to be contentious. That's what I expected. And that's what we got. So, you know, criticize, criticisms of TYT stance on crime aside, we can have those disagreements. I think that it's a little bit bizarre that people were angry that they platformed Matt Gates Because, again, if this were a softball interview, I hear you with the criticism there. But this was not that. And I think that... <laughs> They've proven that, you know, if they platform somebody who's a really egregious figure, it's not going to go well for them. So I thought that this interview was entertaining and uh, great. And I would encourage you to watch the full interview. I'll link to that down below because Matt Gates effectively argues for austerity. So there's a lot of substance here. I just kind of showed you the more sensationalist element of this interview. But there's a lot of substance there where they press him on cutting Social Security, Medicare, and he essentially argues for austerity. And that is something that Republicans are arguing for while trying to hide the ball and claim that that's not what they want. So the interview itself is very substantive, and I think that it really shows how you can easily dismantle right-wing propaganda because when you strip away their talking points, they're kind of left with no other moves than to insult the person who they're talking to. So I think that this interview was very, very good and effective. And I just I had to share it with you because it was it was entertaining and it was, it was great all around.